I want to say to the people that are watching us live on the internet, good morning. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, we're going to get to this lesson in a minute, but before I do, I want to say something. You know, like a uh, uh, sister showed me a flyer where they name all the tribes of Israel, and uh, they name everybody in this hemisphere as the Israelites. Hemisphere, you know, the Mexican, the Puerto Rican. I want you to let you know, and then they're going to say certain people in Haiti is one uh, out of one tribe, and certain people in America is out of another tribe, and certain people in South America. I'm going to tell you something. Every one of us in the America's hemisphere are out of one of the three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. And all the rest of the nine tribes of Israel, most of them are scattered up on the African continent, the land of Ham. Everybody in this hemisphere, out of either the Levi, Judah, or Benjamin, Everybody out of Israel, like the Lord said, we like speckled birds, but we don't get too far from this. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mexicans did not come here as slaves. Puerto Ricans did not come here as slaves. You understand what I'm saying? And you got a whole lot of other people they name American Indian did not come here. A Native American did not come here as slave. You are the only one. And the Lord said, this shall be a sign. So how are you going to take this sign off us and put it on everybody else? And brothers are, scre- are spreading this ilk. And having nothing changed. This is what people don't understand. We have never had a problem with other people. All our problems come from us, sisters and brothers. The prophets, our forefathers, got God mad and he put us here. The prophets was killed by Israelites. The apostles was chased down and stoned and killed by Israelites. And I see our M.O. is the same. We are a deceptive and lying people, and I'm tired of it. It's all that simple. Wonder why we are up against it and why we can't seem to pull up. The Lord said, if you turn to him, he'll build a little sanctuary to you. But we ain't turning, we still lying. We're hating people for stuff that our forefathers brought on us. I like to tell people all the time, I I don't hate nobody. If anybody should be a little overzealous in what they're doing to us, then they are in trouble with God. But this comes from our master, sisters and brothers. Because we're lying people. And we're people that follow everybody's doctrine. I mean, everybody's doctrine. And we're going to have a look at at, at a couple of them now. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn these cell phones off. Because if I get somebody else's cell phone and go off, I'm going to let the earth walk you to the door. Turn them off and put it on vibration. We have two short lessons here, sisters and brothers. Why we have two short lessons is because I want to do something on the head covering of women. To let you know that there ain't nothing in the Bible just to cover, cover space. But being that the head covering, I couldn't put... See, we don't interpret. We don't add to. We don't inflate. We just teach what's in the book. So being that I couldn't get enough, enough to put on the head covering to do a full lesson, I did another short lesson. And we're going to do that first. And the the title of that lesson is Good Friday and Easter, Doctrines of Error. Good Friday and Easter, Doctrines of Error. These sisters and brothers came up because people, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times that we believe stuff, not because somebody intentionally got it wrong. It's just that they didn't have any understanding and they did the best they can. But sometimes the best you can is not good enough. If you have to jump from cliff to cliff and it's 10 feet, 5 inches, and you end up 10 feet, 4 and a half inches, you're going to hit the ground. What I'm saying is you have to be, it is what it is, and it can't be nothing else. So we're going to start this and show you this Good Friday and uh, uh, Easter Doctrine and Error. We're going to start out and show you how the error was made. I mean, right away. And errors come from misunderstanding. We're going to start this in St. John, the 19th chapter. St. John, the 19th chapter. Because we want to 
We, we have to understand these things because you said, well, everybody know if everybody knew that the world would be a different thing altogether. You'd be surprised what people do not know. And I mean, that's a whole lot, sister and brother, a whole lot. St. John chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse 17. So we'll know how we got to where we are when it comes to this Easter and, uh, uh, and Good Friday thing. And don't think it's not a big thing. You wait till Good Friday go up and just get in your car and drive by some of these churches. You can't get through the streets. And then wait till Easter go and drive by some of these churches. You can't get by on the streets. And these people inside are serious. But it is a serious error. And we're going to show you this. St. John, the 19th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 17. 19 and 17. And maybe you get this board, this board ready for me here because I'm going to use it a little bit. Verse 17. Go ahead. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, uh -huh. where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. Now, look. Now, Jesus had to carry his own cross, but when they got there, they crucified him. So let's let you know, let you know this is the crucifixion here. But let me show you something that happened after this crucifixion. Skip down to verse 31. Verse 31 and read it. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation, uh -huh. that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Now, this is where it all went off the, off the mountain. Jews, because it was the preparation. And they didn't want their bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath day. Somebody missed this little uh, 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 addendum here. Go ahead and read. For that Sabbath day was in high day. For that Sabbath day was in high day. Why is it that nobody paid no attention? What make one weekly Sabbath day higher than the other? Each one of them is the seventh day. Somebody should have asked the question, why is it that this particular Sabbath day is a high day? But finish that verse. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Now, so the whole thing is because the world didn't understand about the Sabbath days and there was more than just one weekly Sabbath day, they said, hey, Saturday is a Sabbath day. I even heard some Seventh-day Adventists acknowledge that so they can try to establish a Sabbath day. Well, you see... Well, they got right on the day that Christ died. He, 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 he died on Good Friday because Saturday was the Sabbath day. We're going to see indeed if that is the uh, 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 thing. Because these annual Sabbath days are a great mystery to the whole world. Now, let's run them down. Let's go into Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus, chapter 23. I saw a preacher that was, uh, that, that, that was listening that was listening to us, and he got it almost right. His problem was, he threw in the Passover. <laughs> and when he did that, he had him a problem. When he got to the end of the day, he had him an extra day, he didn't know not what to do with it. <laughs> I just looked at him and shook my head. If you're going to mimic, then you play it over and over and over until you get it down. <laughs> because if you mimic it, that means you don't have no understanding. So that means you, it's just like getting a piece of paper and putting it on a, uh, 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 putting it on a, a, a copy machine. You have to copy it just like it is. But when you get some understanding, you can do the same thing from different directions, but you get to the same location. That's what understanding will do to you, sisters and brothers. But here, on this day, because they didn't realize that Saturday, that the Saturday wasn't the only Sabbath day, the whole world went along with, okay, then, all right, uh, uh, that makes sense. But then we're going to see if it really makes sense. Leviticus 23 and 1. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, uh -huh. Concerning the feast of the Lord, go ahead. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. He said, now these are my feasts. They ain't the Jews' feasts. They ain't the Israelites' feasts. He said, my feast. So if you're a servant of God, then these are supposed to be your feasts. But skip down to verse 6 to 8, uh, verse 6 rather, and we're going to deal with this. Verse 6, go ahead and read. 
And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread uh -huh. unto the Lord. Go ahead. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So now it's on the 15th day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You should eat unleavened bread for seven days. And it says the first day, the first day shall be a holy convocation. That is a Sabbath day. This is one. Unleavened bread. Finish that next verse. Go ahead. Eight. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Uh-huh. And the seventh day is in holy convocation. Go ahead. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Now, and the seventh day is a holy convocation, isn't it? You shall do no servile work. So we have us two Sabbath days here. First day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And you're supposed to have a holy convocation or a solemn assembly. Because these are two Sabbath days, sisters and brothers. Fin Did you finish that eight verse? Yes, sir. Now, let's go a little further. Let's go into Leviticus, the ninth chapter. Just keep writing right on into it. Verse 9. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Go ahead. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. Now, are we going to skip that and pick up that later? Skip down to verse 9. We're going to go to verse 9. I'm going I'm I'm to rearrange that a little bit. Verse 9, 23 and 9. Go ahead. We just read that. Huh? We just read the line? Yes, sir. How did I do that? <laughs> what verse are we? We're, at, we're 11. Okay, keep on. I ain't going to skip it then. I, I guess I'm too old to be creative. <laughs> verse what now? 11. Go ahead and read. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Now, you're going to wave a sheaf. And you make this sheaf after you reap the harvest. You're going to wave it tomorrow after the Sabbath day. You can't wave it, and we're going to show you what that means later on. Go ahead and read. What verse? 12. Uh-huh. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf, of, sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Now, you should do it a he lamb. It had to be male. It had to be firstborn because this lamb represents Jesus, sisters and brothers. Now, skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, and go ahead. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. Uh -huh. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Now, once you do that wave, Chef Alvin, you're going to count seven Sabbaths. Because that way shall offering have to be done on the first day of the week, which is called Sunday. So you go seven Sabbath, that is 49 days, isn't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Even until the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now, 50, that's where Pentecost come from, sisters and brothers. Seven times seven plus one. Always now on the first day, you got to offer a new meat offering to the Lord. Let's see what, you, what this day is called. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21 and read it. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be in holy convocation unto you. Uh -huh. You shall do no servile work therein. Uh -huh. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. So now, this is the day of Pentecost, sisters and brothers. You shall have a holy convocation. And it's going to be, and, you, and this is a statue forever throughout your generation. So now we got the third annual Sabbath day is Pentecost. Because these we need to know, if we knew them, then we wouldn't have that big error that's been made concerning Good Friday and Easter. Now let's go into the 23rd chapter of Leviticus, 23rd verse of Leviticus. Same, Leviticus 23, verse 23. 23 and 23. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, uh -huh. shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Uh -huh. 
Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So, okay, so now in the seventh month, on this particular one, the memorial of the, the blowing of the trumpet, you should have a Sabbath, didn't it? So, trumpets, it called it outright a Sabbath, didn't it? See, this is, might be crude, but I'd rather be crude and be methodical than to be wrong. Because this needs to be understood because every time you tell somebody, you know, Easter, you know, is this a doctrine of error, they're going to fight against you. And you need to show them how that you come to this conclusion according to the Bible. Now, skip down to verse 26. Verse 20, well, go into verse 26, brother. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Uh-huh. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Uh -huh. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, okay, so there's a holy convocation. We had a, another one here. It said that ye shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. But since Jesus died, we don't do no animal sacrifice. But go ahead. What verse? 28. Uh-huh. And ye shall do no work in that same day. Uh-huh. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. So you ain't supposed to do no work. This is the day that you fast. You don't eat no food, drink no water, cut off your TV. And if you just, and, and stop smoking your cigarette, you should do that forever. But this day you do it. <laughs> You're supposed to be afflicted. Because this is a Sabbath. You had a holy convocation. Skip down to verse 32. Verse 32 and read it. Go ahead. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, uh -huh. and ye shall afflict your souls. Uh -huh. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So now, day of atonement is a Sabbath day. You see, this is somebody... All they have to do was just open up the Bible and read this thing, sisters and brothers. That's all you have to do, and it speaks for itself. Now, let's go to the 33rd verse, Leviticus 23 and verse 33. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, uh -huh. The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Uh -huh. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Go ahead. You shall do no servile work therein. Uh -huh. Seven days ye shall offer. She should offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. Uh -huh. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, you have a first day and a seventh day. Both of them you should have holy convocation. Uh, make an offering. But since Jesus died, we don't do no more sacrifice. But what are these called? Skip down to verse 39. Verse 39. And read it. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, uh -huh. when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, Go ahead. ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Uh -huh. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. Now you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. This is tabernacle here. And the first day shall be a Sabbath. How many is that? Go ahead. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And this one we call just simply the eighth day because you can't have seven days of tabernacle and then the tabernacle is eight days. So this is the eighth day. We have a lesson behind this, but we are not going to deal with it. So we just call this the eighth day. So how many Sabbath days do we have here? Seven Sabbath days, sisters and brothers. And that is the problem. The whole world, even though everybody has this Bible in their possession, do not understand that they are more than just the seventh day Sabbath day. These are seven annual Sabbath days. Feast of Unleavened Bread, first and second days, Sabbath, Sabbath. Feast of Pentecost, seven days, uh, 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 one day, Sabbath day. Blowing on the trumpet, Sabbath day. Day of Atonement, Sabbath day. Feast of Tabernacle, Sabbath day, and the eighth day is a Sabbath day. All of these are Sabbath days. All of these are holy days. All of these, the Lord said, you have to keep these days, just like you have to keep the regular Sabbath day. But now, let's look closer at how the error was perpetuated. Let's look at, let's back up now to the fifth verse of this 23rd chapter. Because everything is in the 23rd chapter, sisters and brothers. I tell people all the time, if you understand the 23rd chapter, you know what God is doing. 
Leviticus 23 and back up to the fifth verse, the fifth verse. Okay, go ahead. And the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So now we throw the Passover in here. We throw the Passover in here. Passover. That's the 14th day. Go ahead and read. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And on the, fe the Feast of Unleavened Bread... Is the 15th day. But this day is a Sabbath day. Now, can you see the error here? They didn't know that this annual day. Did you finish that sixth verse? No, sir. Finish it. Bread unto the Lord. Now, they didn't know that. You had these seven Sabbath days. They didn't know that the Passover is always followed by the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which the Lord showed me that it had to be because leavening represents sin. So when the Lord passed over your sin, you're supposed to be purged of your sin. Therefore, you are unleavened. That's why unleavened bread had to follow the Passover because that represents the Lord didn't clean you up now. You're sin free. So we had a Sabbath day following the Passover. The Passover is not a Sabbath day. But the minister in California <coughs> <laughs> didn't know that. So he got stuck with an extra day and he didn't know what to do with it. Now let's go and, and look at it a little further. Let's back up to uh, Exodus the 12th chapter. Exodus the 12th chapter. You know, I listen... I listen to these people because I know I want to see where they are. You understand? For two reasons. I want to see if there's any improvement, and then I, I want to see if what's broken that I need to fix. Because most of these lessons that the Lord calls me to do, I say at least 70 to 80% of them are fixes. Where I saw where so many things are broken, they had to be fixed. So when I started fixing stuff, I found that I had me a whole array of lessons because so many things are broken. A whole lot of things are broken in the name of the Lord. Now I understand what Jesus told that woman in the well. When he said, woman, you worship, you know not what. Because the world are worshiping and they know not what. Now, Exodus the 12th chapter, we're going to start at 1. We're going to start when the Lord started the Passover. Because believe me, the Passover... And the Day of Atonement are the two most important high days. Except for the eighth day, that's higher than everything. But I'm talking about among man time. Because everybody is dirty. Everybody has sinned. There is no pure person in the creation. That's why Jesus is called the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, the Passover is totally necessary or we all be cut off. It's all that simple. Satan had a major and master stroke when he took down Adam and Eve. Because doing so, he slew the whole creation, which wasn't supposed to die. Exodus 12 and 1. So we're going to deal with this most important day. 12 and 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, uh -huh. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Uh -huh. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So now the Lord, the Lord is the one that, that, that changed the months. That's why we don't go along with the Gentile of January. You understand? Our month, beginning of our month, started at a different time of the year. But go ahead and read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, uh -huh. saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So you had to get a lamb, you had to put him up on the tenth day, sisters and brothers. That's why I tell the brothers all the time that try, go, try to eat the lamb on the Passover. I say, if you're going to eat the lamb on the Passover, if you're going to do wrong, at least learn how to do wrong right. Go and get you a female lamb. I guess if you got a house, maybe you can grow one in your backyard. 
And let a male lamb impregnate her. And when she have a male, and you examine her, ain't got another a spot on him, you save him until the tenth day of the first month. And you put him up. And let's see what you do with him. Go ahead and read. Four. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Uh -huh. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. So the first thing is he got to be a firstborn and he can't have no flaws. Go ahead and read. And if and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. Now you got to keep this lamb up until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then what you do with it? And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now you have to kill it on the fourteenth day at evening, sisters and brothers. You cannot go and get a lamb that was killed six months ago and put it in the freezer. <laughs> you have to kill him that very evening. Or at least that very day, sister and brother. You cannot do it early. And you're going to put him up. Go ahead and read what verse? Seven. Uh-huh. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Now you get the blood once you that lamb and you put it over the door post. You cannot go out and just buy you some blood somewhere because a brother actually asked me one time. We had the meat house. Yeah, you got some blood? I looked at him. They said, we had lamb. We got him from Chipotle down there. But when we bought the lamb, he didn't have no head, had no feet, had no skin on him. Could have been a gray hound, but they told us he was a lamb. You understand what I'm saying? And there was no blood on him. You know, Satan is always busy. A little thought, that well, they don't know, but we got chicken blood back to him. But no, I ain't gonna, no, brother, I don't have no blood. You just have to take the lane. So, why is it that you need this blood? Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12. And go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Is it because I'm going to pass through Egypt and I'm going to kill everything, every firstborn, whether it's man or beast? Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, he said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague won't come into you. That's why I can't understand why my brothers don't understand who Jesus is. He didn't say when I see the Israelite home or when I see the clean or when I see the dirty. When I see the blood. So the Lord can put us all in the same box, sisters and brother. Every son and daughter of Adam is dirty. So he can't look at nobody to save him. So he said, in order to keep from losing my whole creation, I'm going to hide them under the blood of the Lamb. And we don't understand that. So when I see the blood, I am going to pass over that house. Sisters and brothers, that's why we should understand about Jesus. Once you put yourself on the blood, the Lord will see Jesus' blood. Because he was a lamb without blemish of the firstborn. And done no son sin. Therefore, he was pure enough to make an atonement for us. With his blood. So he passed, when we put ourselves under, he passes over us. we supposed to understand this. So how do you put yourself under the blood of Jesus? Baptize into the covenant. You have to become a spiritual spouse. That's why I tell the brothers and the sisters, you done married Christ now. You're under the blood. As long and long as you keep the commandments, you ain't got no problem. Because when he see the blood of Jesus, that's like when he see the blood of the lamb, he going to pass over your house. He going to pass over your sin and you will live even forever. Even if you die, he going to raise you up and you're going to live forever. What verse are we? We're at 14. Go ahead. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh -huh. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now, he didn't say this was a Sabbath, did he? 
He said, it's a memorial and you shall keep it a feast because the Sabbath day is a feast, sisters and brothers. And you shall keep it forever. That's a long time, ain't it? Yes, Skip down to verse 17. Verse, verse 17. And go ahead. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Now, here come the other one. Now you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. So right after the Passover, sisters and brothers, come the feast of unleavened bread. You could have read right into it. It wouldn't have made no difference. But the whole thing is the feast of unleavened bread always follow the Passover. Always. And the feast of unleavened bread is a Sabbath day, but the Passover is not a Sabbath day. But both of them are feast. Now let's go into Mark, the 14th chapter. Mark chapter 14. Because this whole thing, this, this Eastern Good Friday thing, all of it came from era. So now you had it, and Everybody, had they known it was an error, then they might have looked and said, where did they get these names from? Where did Easter come from? But, hey, when you have an error and you don't know you have an error, then you don't look for no correction, do you? It's all that simple. It's just like when you're talking about the lost child of Israel, the lost child of Israel. Ain't nobody talking about no loss, nothing, because you got a bunch of people say, we are Israel, we just call ourselves Jews. So if ain't nobody lost, who's looking? That's what it's all about. You know, you can, you can have a $100 bill in your pocket, hole in it, dropped out. You don't know it. You go on about your business. You're busy doing whatever you do. Then you get ready to buy something. You go in there, and you ain't got that $100. Now you know you lost your $100. What you going to do now? You're going to start looking for it. You're going to put out a search. So it's the same thing about a people. As long as you say, this people is found, ain't nobody looking for them, sister and brother. Now, Luke. 14 and verse 1. Uh, Mark 14 and 1. I'm looking at my own writing. I can't read it. Mark 14 and 1. Okay, go ahead. After two days was the feast of the Passover. After and, uh, two days was the feast of the Passover. I used to think that was a mistake. Until the Lord showed me that the Passover was a feast too. After two days was the feast of the Passover. Go ahead and read. And of unleavened bread. And of unleavened bread. Go ahead. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft uh -huh. and put him to death. Go ahead. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. Now, see, they, they were looking to put Jesus to death. They wanted to kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, because it's going to be an uproar of the people. Why was it going to be an uproar of the people? Because that was a Sabbath day. And these Israelites took their Sabbath day serious. That's one of the main reasons they got mad at Jesus, because he healed a woman on the weekly Sabbath day. They wanted to kill him for that. Man had a withered arm. He straightened that out on the Sabbath. They wanted to kill him for that. So they said, look, we can't kill Jesus on the Sabbath day because we, on, on, the, on the feast day because there's a Sabbath. If we kill him, the people are going to stone us. So let's let you know. Behind the Passover come the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, an annual Sabbath. But being that the people didn't understand that, the Gentiles didn't understand it, they read in St. John, the 19th chapter, where it said the next was the Sabbath day, and they just run off and create their own, a whole new doctrine. I mean a whole new doctrine that left Jesus out. Now let's go back to St. John, the 19th chapter. I'm just showing you how error can be made. And if the one that's made it is uninformed, and the one that he's teaching is uninformed, it go on for years and years and years. And now when somebody come along and point it out, now you want to fight because you mostly are embarrassed. <laughs> how, can I, how can I believe this all about it? has got to be something wrong. Something is wrong. Somebody fell to finish reading one verse. If you had finished reading one verse, it said for the next, for that Sabbath was a high Sabbath, then the light would have went on on your head. What's it mean, high Sabbath? See, you don't look for nothing until it come on. It's just like we kept tabernacle eight days. I, I never paid no attention until one sister pointed out, so how you going to get, how you going to, uh, this say eight days instead of seven, but the books are seven. What you going to do about this other day? 
Boom. Hit me like a tree. Now I know something was missing. I had to search and find out what it was. But until somebody brought the question, uh, slapped me upside the head, I thought I had everything in my Perfect. You know, so when you think all your money's in your pocket, you don't look for nothing else. But when somebody let me know, well, you got a hole in your doctrine. They didn't know what the hole was, but they recognized it was a hole. That means I had to go and sew it up. Same thing with this. We telling you, look, you got a hole in your, in your doctrine. Somebody need to go back and do some sewing. St. John 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 38. St. John 19 and 38, because they, they, they had to get him off the cross and uh, uh, bury him. Verse 38, go ahead. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, uh -huh. besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. See, now this man followed Jesus, but he did it secretly. Because the Israelites have always hated the name of Jesus. People think that just, that just started in this generation. It's been in every generation. They beat Peter them up and threatened them and said, Don't you go no more teaching in this name. Yeah. And this Joseph was a wealthy man. But they stone wealthy people too. <laughs> so he came secretly and begged the body of Jesus. And he gave it to him. Go ahead and read. 39. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night uh -huh. and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Now this Nicodemus, he was, there, he was one of the, what you call the uh, 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 teachers in Israel. He was among the priests. He said, you know, what did he say? Are you a master in Israel and you don't understand born again? He didn't. And people still don't understand born again. And they got all these doctorates in theology. And get up, I've been born again. You walk up and cut them, they're going to bleed. <laughs> if you were born again, I could cut you and you wouldn't bleed. Do you understand? Probably couldn't cut you. Probably break the blade. But the whole thing is, but they don't understand. Misinformation. So Nicodemus came. He snuck in by night too and helped him out. Go ahead and read. 40. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, uh -huh. as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Go ahead. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. Uh -huh. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. Uh -huh. they, they, there laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day. For the sepulcher was nigh at hand. See, now, they laid him now, not because... It, uh, 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 they had already figured this out, where they're going to put him. They put him in a grave that was close. It just happened to be this rich guy's grave. Not because he wanted to put him in his grave, but because it was almost sundown. They had to get him in the ground before the sun went down. Because the next day was a Sabbath day. That's why they had to hurry up and do it. Because... They didn't want to have nothing on the Sabbath day. So now, being that the next day was a day of a, 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 was a, a feast of unleavened bread, it was a Sabbath day, then Jesus died before the Sabbath day. He died on the Passover. Why did he die on the Passover? Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and find out. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. See, people have a whole lot of theories, sisters and brothers, but nobody bothers to go in the book and find out about stuff. And it's not complicated. All you got to do is just go in there and read it. First Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We're going to read one verse. Verse 7. First Corinthians 5 and verse 7. Okay, read it. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Now, look look what it says. Now, purge out, therefore, the old leaven. In other words, purge out there 
For the old sin, go ahead and read. That ye may be a new lump. That you may be a new lump. That's one that don't have no sin in it. Go ahead and read. As ye are unleavened. As you have become unleavened. Go ahead. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Because Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, sister and brother. He is the Passover. And once he was sacrificed, we are supposed to have been purged of the old leaven or the old sin. That's why the Lord brought it to my attention not to baptize any uncircumcised brother. Because it said, if you're going to keep the Passover, let all the males be circumcised. So if you're going to take part of Jesus, then if he is the Passover, then what must happen to you? Circumcised. Don't take no rocket scientist to figure that out. It takes somebody's just take the opportunity, the time to read the book. So Jesus is the Passover. But we still have this thing. We said the Lord died on Good Friday and rose on Easter Sunday morning, but still he's the Passover. But let's ask, look and ask them. Jesus they asked Jesus for a sign because they wanted to know, was he indeed the Christ? He told them, but they didn't listen. And this day, they still ain't listening. Let's go into Matthew, the 12th chapter. Matthew chapter 12. That's the funny thing about it. Israel always asking questions, but don't nobody listen. Then when you answer the question, they listening, not to hear what you say, listening so you can stop so they can jump in and give you their opinion. I had that a lot. People call in or either see me, brother, you know, I've been wondering about this thing. Uh, you know what this is? I said, yeah, open the book. I'll read it to him. Well, you know, brother, you know, that's your opinion. <laughs> I just read this. How can it be my opinion? I just read it. I, I wasn't around when that was written. <laughs> well, you know, the book said you should jump up. See, see, that's your take on it. How, how, how many ways can you jump up? <laughs> So they wanted to know if Jesus was the Christ. We're going to start at verse 12, Matthew, uh, verse 38, verse 38, Matthews 12 and 38. Okay, go ahead. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Look, sisters and brothers, and that haven't stopped yet. Don't you know this, this Israelite is still looking for a sign? They want to, they want to be able, I'm going to put my head on this brother's head and he's going to fall out and slob and kick all over. Or either I'm going to say something and, and, and you got one guy was so, I say, raunchy with it until he wave his hand and a bunch of people will fall down. <laughs> I said, how can people believe this stuff? Then they're going to come and you bring all the sick. I'm going to heal them all. Have you ever noticed that they ain't never healed nobody that you know? <laughs> what I'm saying, let us reason together, sisters and brothers. It's time to stop being foolish. So who look for a sign? An evil and adulterous generation of signs. I cannot teach you what thus said the Lord in the language that you speak. I have to teach you in a song that you can't understand. Now I got to depend on this sister, sister to interpret what I just said to you. Maybe both of us lie. If you can't understand it. Plus again, two the made tongues, a big bone. All that means another language, sisters and brothers. He said, evil and adulterous generation seeketh out the sign. But what did he say? Go ahead. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Go ahead and read. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, uh -huh. so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He gave the sign. So now, if he is not in the grave three days and three nights, then he is not the Christ. He gave them what they asked for, but one nobody listening. You know why I know they weren't listening? Because they said he died on Good Friday and he rose Easter Sunday morning. We're going to do Friday, Saturday, 
And Sunday, three days and three nights, he was in there Friday night, Saturday night, whoops, can't go Sunday, can we? Because they roll these on Sunday morning. So what do we have in essence? We have what? Two night and one day. So Jesus is not the Christ. No wonder the people that call themselves us are still looking for Messiah to come. Because they didn't hear the sign either. So who are all these people worshiping that call themselves Christians tomorrow? Because he didn't come. He can't get it. Your own thing tell me that. So now what we got to do is find out how was this error made. Because he could, I'm going to tell you something, sometime when you are teaching something or somebody tell you something and you read certain things, your flag's supposed to go up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into St. John, the 20th chapter. St. John, the 20th chapter. I mean, this is not hard, sisters and brothers. People don't want to think. I want everybody to do something for me. I want, it, I want, when Jesus come, I don't want to do no works. I want him to do all my works. I don't have to do it. Christ did it all. You sit down and you can have a plate full of food on the table. And you say, I ain't going to get my, I ain't going to reach out there and eat this food. I'm going to let somebody else come feed you. You can starve to death looking at food. If you don't feed yourself, you will die. It's all that simple. This man do not want, he want everything easy. I don't want to put it for no effort. I don't want to com- discipline myself. I don't need no control. All I need is Christ. And he telling you all the time, your behavior is going to decide where you're going to end up. You got to do something. Now, this is simple here. St. John 20 and verse 1. St. John 20 and verse 1. Once you read this, this is easy here. Go ahead and read it. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. The first day of the week, which is Sunday, cometh Mary Magdalene early. Go ahead. When it was yet dark. Wait a minute. Let me interpret that. Because maybe you don't understand yet with this modern day language. While it was still dark. We understand what dark is, don't we? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Unto the sepulchre, uh-huh. and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. The stone was gone. Go ahead. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, uh-huh. and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Oh, so when they got, when she got there, while it was still dark, he was gone. Somebody flag should have went up. Wait a minute. How is it? That he rose on Easter Sunday morning and the sun had not risen. Why is it that we are having sunrise service and when they got there, the sun had not risen and he was gone? If you had read just this two verses of the 20th chapter of St. John, that should have put your flag up. Something is wrong here. Then you hear him now when you start busting him on it. Oh, it don't matter. The whole thing, he died. That's all that count. He died. No, it don't work like that. I know you didn't heard that before. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody stole the money. And you're trying to make an inquiry who stole the money. And they said, and they the thief. Oh, look, don't worry about it. The money's gone. That's what it amounts to. That's what it amounts to. <laughs> yeah, but I want to know who stole it. So now you go on there because you've been believing a lie and you are too embarrassed. And you're supposed to have a, de- a degree in theology. You even have a title, doctor something. Spiritual healer. That's what it is. If you ain't a medical doctor, then you're supposed to be a spiritual doctor. But I'm going to be nice. And I ain't going to tell you what you are. <laughs> However, so now if you want to know when the Lord rose, we got to find out when he died. Let's go into Daniel's the ninth chapter. Because we already know from what Jesus said, and Jesus can't lie, and we know he can't lie. He said he was going to be in the grave three days and three nights. So if we come up with the day that he went in the grave, then we can put on our hand on the day when he come out of the grave. That's what I like about the word of God. There's always a way to prove it. And the Lord said, prove me. 
And you got preachers don't want to be questioned. The Lord said, prove him. So if he wants you to tell you to prove him, who are you if I ask you a question? Well, you see, you can't question the Lord. I'm not questioning the Lord, mister. I'm questioning you. That's why people call here and they ask the question. And I answer the question. What you, you mean you going to answer my question? Ain't that what you call here for? Now, this is concerning Messiah. People use this to come up with the seven-year tribulation, which, ain't, which ain't, is non-existence. This is talking about Jesus, Jews, and Jerusalem. We're going to start at verse 25. Daniel's 9. Daniel's the ninth chapter. Daniel's the ninth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 25. Daniel's 9 and verse 25. Okay, read it. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So we're talking about a commandment given to restore Jerusalem until the anointing of Jesus because Messiah is, mean the anointed one. And he gave you a time, 69 weeks. Go ahead and read. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time. Go ahead. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. In other words, when he get here, he's going to be killed. Go ahead and read. But not for himself. But not for himself. Jesus didn't, sin, didn't commit one sin, but he died because of sin. So whose sin was he cut off for? Ours. This is why I can't understand. Why can't nobody read an old book, tell a, old book here and see Messiah here? You're going to talk about it, but you don't believe it was him. Go ahead and read. And the people of the prince that shall come, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That is the Romans. After 7 AD, after Jesus came and did what he did, died, went on back to heaven, and the apostles ran, they, they ran their uh, 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 route that they had to do. Then in 7 AD, Titus destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground. Didn't leave one stone upon another, like Jesus said. People of the prince, go ahead and read. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. Uh -huh. And unto the end of the war, desolation are determined. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Uh, that's Jesus. Shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. What does he mean? Uh, cause the sacrifice and the oblation to see. Sisters and brothers, because Jesus was the sin offering. We're going to show you that. That's why people saw, haven't paid no attention that when Jesus died on the cross, the book said a veil ripped from top to bottom. That was the end of animal sacrifice. Because all the animals that was killed for sin, the priest had to get his blood, dip his finger in it, and go before the veil and sprinkle it seven times to absorb your other friend. It's all the sin. But, when the veil ripped, there was nowhere to sprinkle the blood. So now if you don't have no place to sprinkle the blood, then you don't have no reason to kill the animal. That was the end of animal sacrifice for sin. But what Paul they said? In the midst of the week, it happened to have two prophecies, sisters and brothers. One, the midst of his ministry, because Jesus only preached for three and a half years. And the other one, I know that Jesus had to rise on the Sabbath day because the Lord gave man seven days. So what is the midst of the week? We're talking Wednesday here, ain't we? We're going to go Wednesday, and we're going to go Thursday, and we're going to go Friday, and Saturday and Sunday. So now, if he died on the cross... And they put him in the grave in the midst of the week. What's that one night at? Two nights and three nights. Okay, in the daytime, Thursday, one day, Friday, two days, and Saturday, three days. And he rose Saturday evening just by at sundown. So Jesus did not go in the grave. On a Friday, he went in the grave in the midst of the week, which is a Wednesday. And he rose Thursday. I mean, so he ro rose three days and three nights later. Friday night, Saturday night. I mean, Thursday night, uh, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. 
Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And he rose before sundown because God gave man seven days. After the seven days over with, there is no more animal called man. You will be God. Flesh and blood will be terminated, sister and brother. That's why he's the, uh, Paul told you in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, we shall not all sleep and otherwise we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. 7,000 years from the day that Adam was created, that's all we got, sister and brother. And we're real close to this thing. I mean, real close. So now, Jesus didn't die on Good Friday. He rose on Easter Sunday morning. And the people that teach that, they taught it in error, sisters and brothers. They taught it in error. Because man have seven days. And at the end of the seven days, it is over with. We're going to go back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and look at it one more time. Oh, let's go to Hebrews. We're going to go and show you this. I'm getting ahead of myself. But we're going to get to Leviticus later. Let's go into Hebrews because you need to know that Jesus is the one that terminated animal sacrifice. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because here, sisters and brothers, when Jesus died, it was all over with. Animals got a break. <laughs> they was dying for nothing anyway. And we're going to show you this. The only thing the Lord was doing is just preparing you, keeping in your mind, sin bring about death. Sin bring about death. And sin is costly. You can go broke. You have to sacrifice all your livestock. Because if you don't sacrifice your livestock, the priest going to have you stoned. So you're going to give up the cow. It's all that simple. Sin. The ways of sin is death. That is written. Hebrews 10 and 1. Hebrews 10 and 1. Go ahead. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there too perfect. See, this is one of the things that escaped the world. That thing when you hear the word law, you're talking commandments only. No, you have the law of animal sacrifice. The law was if you sinned, you had to kill one of your livestock. But it could never bring the ones that dealing with it to perfection. In other words, perfection means you can never become God killing animals. Why is it that you can never reach perfection? Reach down to verse 4. Down to first, verse 4 and read it. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Now that's why it couldn't help you. Because the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. So you could sacrifice your whole herd and still you was in your sin. But being that Jesus was God before he was man, he couldn't die. So he needed something to die. Read the next verse. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, uh -huh. but a body hast thou prepared me. Sacrifice and offering, you didn't, you, you didn't have no need for it. You wish you didn't have to deal with it. So what you did, you prepared me a body. Because there needs to be a sacrifice that makes a difference. Let's see what's going to happen with that body that was prepared for him. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He needed a body that could die, sisters and brothers. So we are set apart by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That was the ultimate sin of that is the That is the blood that, that's put out there now that that ram that we looked at the lamb in the 12th chapter of Exodus was pointing toward. So once his body was sacrificed, what happened? Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and read it. Now where remission of these is, uh -huh. there's no more offering for sin. There is, after that, there is no more offering for sin. Just like he told you in night, Daniel the ninth chapter, he's going to call sacrifices and offering to cease. Ain't no more offering for sin now. If you sin now, you're on your own, sister and brother. But I'm going to tell you, for sure, without deviation, without any kind of doubt, you will go directly to hell. <laughs> I want you to know that. Because you know better now. Once you don't know better, and you make mistakes, you might get a break. But once you know better, and start doing it, you're in trouble. But I ain't going to read it today. I'm going to let you find that on your own. So now, 
When Jesus died, animal sacrifices ended, sister and brother. It ended. But just as important, he rose on the weekly Sabbath day. And the question is, why did he rise on the weekly Sabbath day? Let's go now to, and look at it. Let's go into uh, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, rather, the 23rd chapter, because everything is in Leviticus, sisters and brothers. I mean, like everything. People never even paid no attention that he rose. They ain't got him rise on the Sabbath. They got him rise on the first day of the week. They didn't put man somewhere God said he can't go. Yeah, they put him in heaven all the time. But then, that's a doctrine in error. Leviticus 23rd chapter, we're going to start at verse 3. This is the weekly Sabbath day here. Let you know what God gave you. Leviticus 23 and verse 3. Okay, read it. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest uh-huh. and holy convocation. Go ahead. Ye shall do no work therein. Uh-huh. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So six days. So you're supposed to keep uh, every, sa- every seventh day is the Lord's Sabbath day. It's the Lord's Sabbath day. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10. And go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, uh-huh. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, Go and ahead. shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Now, he's going to let you know when you go and reap the harvest, you get a sheaf of it and you bring that to the priest. Go ahead and read. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord uh-huh. to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Now look. It's just like when you reap the harvest, when your crop come up. In other words, when you get something out of the ground, because this really represents Jesus' sister and brother. You cannot wave it before the Lord until you get it up. But no matter when you re- reap the harvest, you can only wave it tomorrow after the Sabbath day. Because it was in the ground. It was a seed in the ground. But when it come up, it was something else. What went in wasn't close to the magnificence of what came out. Therefore, you couldn't wave that on the seventh day. You always had to wave that on the morrow after the Sabbath day. So when Jesus come out the grave, they found him on the first day of the week, always in the garden, walking around. When the woman got ready to go, and when, when she was asking him, thinking he was the gardener, show us where you laid the body, we're taking away. Then finally he said, Mary. She turned around and said, Rabona. He said, touch me not. But I have not ascended to the Father. He was the first fruit of the first fruit. But he was man on the seventh day, and he was God on the eighth day. The day after the Sabbath, sister and brother. That's why it's important to understand that. What verse are we? We're at 12. Go ahead. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf of and he lamb without blemish of the first year for burnt offering unto the Lord. See now, what do you, what do you offer with that first fruit of he lamb of the first year without blemish? That's what Jesus was. He was the firstborn of his mother. He committed no sin. So he was a he lamb of the first year and had no blemish. But then he was the first of the first. But then let's see why we observe this day of Pentecost. Skip now to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Go ahead and read. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Uh huh. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven times seven is what? Go ahead and read. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days. Even, see, it didn't stop at the seventh. Even until the morrow after the Sabbath. We're doing it again, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Shall we number fifty days? Go ahead and read. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now you're going to now offer a new meat offering to the Lord on the morrow after the Sabbath day. Go ahead and read. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deal. Uh huh. They shall be of fine flour. Uh huh. They shall be bacon with leaven. Now look, these, see, when you did the one he lamb, it was without leaven. You can't eat leaven bread because he ain't never sinned. But now this new meat offering, you bake it with leaven because that's those of us that's in the first resurrection. We all have been without sin. 
and uh, with, uh, with sin, rather. And the only way that we escape, we hid under the blood. So what did it say here? Go ahead, finish that. And they are the first fruits unto the Lord. They are the first fruit unto the Lord, or you can say they are the, a part of the first resurrection unto the Lord. Because, but when did that happen? Tomorrow after the Sabbath day. Why tomorrow after the Sabbath? Because God gave man seven days. At the end of the seventh day, man no longer exists. Only thing left is God. And whatever else that is in the lake of fire. <laughs> but whatever it is, it is eternal. It is immortal. It won't burn up and it won't go away. That's why I say you better realize what you're dealing with. Because if I don't go somewhere where I'm going to be forever, I want to make sure I'm in the best place there is that could be acquired at that time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, I just want to show you, sisters and brothers, how an error was made because people did not understand the word of God. Because Israel, the priest, was gone into captivity. Therefore, when Israel died, all this great knowledge of all these Sabbath days and the annual Sabbath days died with him. And the Gentiles didn't understand. They only understood one day was the Sabbath. That was the Sabbath. And because of that, you got Good Friday and you got Easter. A doctrine totally founded on error. And can't nobody tell you different because we read that, didn't we? Yes, sir. So when Easter come around on Good Friday, get your notes and go beat somebody. <laughs> Down. Now we're going to get to the second leg of this, sister and brother. The second small lesson we have in here is the head covering. This is the one I wanted to deal with in the beginning, but I knew I didn't have enough. But this means something, sister and brother. You have people that read certain things and they're going to put their spin into it. You get people trying to debate. Ain't no spin in the word of God. It is what it is. What you do if you see something you don't understand, then study to find out what it represents. God is not a God of rituals. He's a God of information. Inform you how to become him. And we're going to show you this. You're going to read this here. I guess Paul don't know what he's talking about. Paul, only time I uh, 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 challenged Paul is when I went and found out on the circumcision. And he didn't change it with all people. He changed it just for the Gentile. That let me know right there there was a problem with it. Because the Lord said, one law for all. Why me? I'm an Israelite. I don't get circumcised and I can go in the lake of fire. But you're a Gentile or somebody else other than an Israelite. You don't have to circumcise, be circumcised and you can go on into God's kingdom. Something ain't right with that, is it? Yes, sir. I don't know what Paul did, what he did. I ain't going to question him. I, and I ain't going to have to ask him when I see him because when I become God, I know everything. <laughs> but that ain't the first mistake that men of God made. Moses made a mistake in the written divorcement. Joshua and them made a mistake when they run out and made a, 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 a got into a covenant with the Gibeonites. Mm -hmm. So in order to make sure that you don't get caught up with the mistakes of the flesh, which can happen in any generation, you have to know the law. And the law tell me point blank that all males, whether born in Abraham's house or bought with money that means the blood of Jesus got to be circumcised. And saying Christ is the Passover, so the law tells me if I am going to take part of the Passover, I got to be circumcised. So ain't nothing else left. Out of the mouth of two or more witnesses is a fact established. I got to tell you about it, whether you believe or not, that's on you. Believe me, I tell you all the time, the Lord told the watchman to warn the people. If he, if he said, I'm going to bring a sword on the land, and you, don't want, and you warn the people and they don't do right, their blood is on their own head. But if you want them and they don't do right, they're still going to die. But you have delivered yourself. I am not saving you. I'm delivering me. So let's look at this thing. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And we're going to show you that this, in this case, Paul had a point. I searched it out, sister and brother. I don't take nothing for face value. 
But then I didn't violate either. The Lord told you to prove him. You understand? So you go and you search it out. Why is it that this guy went here? What is the problem here? 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Be ye followers of me, uh -huh. even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. He said, I want you to follow me as long as I follow Christ. He said, I want you to keep the ordinance. That I'm, uh, remember these ordinances that I'm delivering to you. Go ahead. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man, uh -huh. and the head of Christ is God. So we have a protocol here, don't we? The head of every man is a woman. You sure? You sure? Okay. I'm going to say The head of every man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God, and the head of every woman is man, sisters and brothers. I just want to make y'all y'all understood that. Because nowadays, it's going to bring in questions. I even said something uh, 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 yesterday, I said, uh, uh, I said to some people, I wonder who the helpmate is. But go ahead and read. For every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. Now, this is what he said, dishonors his head. I don't, you can't go nowhere and fix that. You understand? You do what you want, but what's written is what's written. Go ahead and read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Now, it's an every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonor her head. That's why a lot of times women call on the phone and ask questions. Like, you got something on your head? No, put something on your head then. But you're going to find out why I asked that question. Go ahead and read. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. Now, ain't that something? Go ahead. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. Uh -huh. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered. Now, if you're ashamed, sister, for your head to be shaved, bald, he said, then let your head be covered. It's all that simple. Same thing with a man. A man, a uh, uh, prayer prophesied with his head uncovered, he dishonored his head. People try to argue the question. I said, well, no, I got me a problem. When they try to say your hair is the covenant. I got me a problem. Every time I get ready to pray, I got to shave my head. Ain't this what they're saying? Go ahead and read. Seven. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Uh-huh. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. And that is correct. Go ahead and read. Neither was the man created for the woman but the woman for the man. That is correct. Go ahead. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. And he said it right there. And they missed it. For this cause ought a woman to cover her head. How? Because she's under her man. That's her power on her head. Because of the angels. What angels? Let's go and have a quick look at them. Let's go into Revelation the 12th chapter. Revelation the 12th chapter. He told you why. Ain't nobody listening. That's why women say, we don't want to cut my head and this and that. And you're always running your mouth when you're supposed to be shutting up. <laughs> Can't say nothing. <laughs> Revelation 12, we're going to start reading at verse 7. Revelation 12 and 7. Go ahead and read. And there was war in heaven. Uh -huh. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Now Michael and his angels fought against Satan the devil. That's the dragon. Who, who lost? Go ahead. And prevailed not. Uh -huh. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. And the great dragon was cast out. Go ahead. That old serpent. That old serpent. Called the devil. Called the devil. And Satan. And Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. Well, he did it right. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. 
and his angels were cast out with him. So now he was cast out and he had a third of angels. See, Satan ain't the only devil. Third of the angels became devil, sister and brother. But Satan, the dragon, that old serpent, was the head of him. So now, when man was created, we're going to show you why that Paul said, woman, cover your head because of the angel. Who you think came to Eve? Let's go look at it. Let's go into, let's go into Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis chapter 2. Paul saw what was going on. And the Lord put in his mind to put this in the book. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath day live via the internet. Log on to our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath day live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. If you enjoy our program, we would appreciate your donations to help defer the cost of continuing this work. Send donations to the Israel of God, 2515 East 75th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 606. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you. 